What up world? This is the Goal Net recording here live outside of Chicago. And today's video is going to be an overview of the new CCM E-Flex 6 goalie pads, glove and blocker. So as you can see, the boot logo confirms it, but even though we have the retro graphic and the retro logo, this is the latest and greatest CCM E-Flex 6. Before we dive in too deep, please take a moment, smash the like button, and throw me a follow if you don't do so already. Uh, I believe I do hopefully some of the best uh, equipment overview and review related content out there. Hopefully you'll feel the same and will throw me a bone with the follow. Let's get down to business. So as you can see, this is CCM's digital printing capability. Uh, this still has the tags on it, and we are here in TGN Gear Labs. Been dying to wear this stuff, but wanted to do a proper overview deep dive video yet, so I haven't even worn this. You can see we've still got the gloves on the 581, or excuse me, still have the tags on the 581 glove. So this will be the first time that you are able to get CCM's custom graphics available at retail. For anybody that follows my Instagram account, you know I am emphatical about not doing graphics copying. CCM is currently Coho. They own all of the graphics. So this is the first ever legal retro pop in graphic um, as I like to look at it. So super excited about this, but also wanted to take advantage of the digital printing and show off what CCM is doing. So if we zoom in right there, you can see the faux stitching and the dots, um, which just give the graphic, you know, a little bit of depth from far away. Um, and is also an homage to the Heat and Heat Light 4 Colzigs I had, which were the first uh, printed graphic pro pad in the market. And they had those dots um, up here in the shin area. So mine had a red boot and then the dots sort of transitioned to black and they were a black upper. So anyway, graphics is super sick. So anybody that ever wanted to get a retro Patrick Waugh graphic, Felix Potvin graphic, uh, any of the classic Reebok Premier Series graphics, you can now do that, as well as send in your own designs and get something completely custom. Um, so super exciting for anybody that's a fan of CCM gear, but it's been dying for custom equipment, your prayers have been answered. While we are talking aesthetics, I think one other key thing to point out is the middle knee roll there. As you can see, I got the darts, um, which were on the original Potvin graphic. But if anybody remembers the E-Flex 5, it had the exposed uh, molded middle knee roll and the graphic basically stopped at that knee roll. And for any of the custom printed sets, I can remember seeing like a Heaton uh, H10 graphic. You know, the graphic basically stopped. Um, CCM, one of the updates, and this is just purely aesthetic. Um, they are now covering the middle knee roll um, with the same material as the rest of the pad. So you won't be able to see the inner molded technology, but the benefit to that, um, which I think almost every goalie will approve of, is just the fact that you can get a cleaner, fully matching uh, thigh to toe graphic. You don't necessarily have the panel here that does it match? And if you did like that, you know, you could always order custom and get a mismatched knee roll, but really subtle detail. But I know watching the comments um, on Instagram, that just drove a lot of people nuts. And CCM has sort of uh, updated it. I don't want to say the word corrected because it wasn't necessarily a flaw, always opinion, um, but they have updated that for the E-Flex 6 coming off the E-Flex 5. Let's dive in next to the actual technology um, that is in this gear. So one of the tough things I think about being a consumer of goalie equipment is that each individual product family, so in the case of CCM, the two product families are Axis and Eflex, 
Every year, one of those product families is getting updated, which means each individual product family typically has a two year release cycle. Um, so this is the 2023 model year. We're getting E-Flex 6 back in 2021. We got E-Flex 5 for 2022. We got Axis 2 for 2020. We got Axis 1. So every year there's a new CCM product in the store. It alternates between E-Flex and Axis. Reason I bring this up is because sometimes I think it could be frustrating as a consumer where you see something new on the Axis pad, but you are more of an E-Flex goalie. And it's kind of like, hey, what do I do and buy? But the good news is um, with the way the model year updates, if you're patient enough to wait the next year, a lot of times any of the technology which was new for Axis, which makes sense on the E-Flex family, they will bring it over. And what I'm zoomed in on right now is the DRS system. So this is a one piece landing gear above the knee and that is designed um, to improve the seal of the pad uh, improve the responsiveness of the pad again that debuted on axis 2. what's a little bit different about how ccm does that compared to some other people that have a one-piece knee block is that actually instead of hinging the knee block inside the core of the pad so there isn't um, physically a bracket or a connector running through the knee block into the core um, there's actually basically a piece right here connecting it. And what it does um, is that it gives you that connected feel you want from the one piece knee block. But if you still want some flex, as you can see, this knee block bends a little bit. Um, you know, if you're very particular about how your pad flexes against the post in RVH, or you are somebody that is just worried um, that a knee block might be too stiff and might hinder the way you play. You will like CCM's um, DRS system because it does give the pad a bit more of a classic feel um, where it wiggles, but you're still getting the benefit of how well um, it's gonna lock down and seal. And then there's a uh, molded uh, landing area here. Um, so you should get really good impact absorption when you're going down to a butterfly. CCM was definitely uh, the first brand. I remember talking about the fact that you put um, like twice your body weight uh, going on your knees when you go down on the butterfly. So they've always really been a leader in that category. Um, and so they've really put a lot of time and energy into this knee block. So again, you can see labeled DRS system. Um, that's, you know, not the two, three pieces there, monolithic one piece knee block, and then still, you know, gives a little bit. And if you'll notice, it kind of flexes in, um, but it's not really gonna let you over rotate. So it bends this way. So if you want a little flex or lean for a more traditional feel, you're gonna get that, but it's not gonna bend outward. And then again, in summary, you get the nice molded piece there. Um, and then also down here inside uh, the calf. Another key technology change from the E-Flex 5 to the E-Flex 6 is the dual light core technology inside the pad. So even though this is gonna be CCM's more flexible pad stock, one of the things they did um, is they basically, it's called dual core um, because there are basically two flex zones um, inside the pad. So the knee area down here um, is gonna be designed to flex so that it moves as you need it. And then up here, the thigh rise is going to be much stiffer um, so that you're not gonna get any squeakers or anything like that inside uh, your five hole. I definitely posted some videos a few years ago. I think it was Yaroslav Halak um, or Robin Leonard, you know, getting some slap shots and literally going through the five hole. So this pad is gonna be nice and stiff and reinforced there. So it's gonna flex down here where you want it. And it'll be a little bit stiffer up there where you want it as well, which is definitely the trend in goaltending. One thing you will notice is that I don't have um, a break there. It will be standard. If you follow, it'll be standard with the break. If you follow my account, you'll know that I like my pads very stiff. Um, so even though I try and get something close-ish um, to stock for review purposes, 
I also want a pad that I'm going to be happy and comfortable with on the ice. So I did order these stiffer um, than the stock pad. So I have no outer break. So you can see that I have this basically one piece outer roll on the pad. Also should have touched on this earlier when we were just sort of talking about the aesthetics, but CCM cleaned up this pad a bit as well and kind of gave it the axis two treatment. So we've got no binding here on the outside of the pad and no binding here on the top edge of the pad as well. So most of those, in my opinion, are a bit more aesthetic, um, but it are less things to wear and tear on the pads. Trade-off is, you know, you could always replace bindings. Most people don't bother to return, repair their gear anymore, um, but it gives the pad that bigger square, more modern look. Um, we start cutting off the rolls because you're gonna see, you know, the pad itself, um, it's gonna look nice and big and help the goalie present square. And then for me, the last key technology upgrade coming from the E-Flex 5 to the E-Flex 6 is the update here of the Quick Motion Strapping System 2. Um, this is just an updated and streamlined version of the original Quick Motion Strapping System. Um, very simple, one strap through here. This is a very heavy grade um, elastic. And this is basically going to sit on your leg like a professor strap. And then if you do order custom pads, there's some other options to add leather straps. Um, I believe you can still get a lower strap as well. As we've talked about a lot in this video, the E-Flex 6 is getting sort of what I would call the Axis 2 treatment. A lot of the goodies from uh, that line have been ported over to the E-Flex one key difference though, the quick motion strapping system two on Axis two was very well designed, worked well, but the strap here was really, really short. Um, and I wear bigger knee pads and I have relatively beefy calves. And I actually had a problem where every set of CCM gear I've ordered since I started doing this. So going back to uh, CCM Premier two, I think it was first, yeah, the Neflex 4, 5, now 6, Axis 1, Axis 2. So basically six generations of pads. I've ordered 35 plus one and a half with all of them and I've never had an issue. Uh, for me, the strap worked great, um, but it was so short. Um, it basically held the pad up uh, closer to my knee, which is actually similarly to how I wear my power pads. So the strapping worked great. The problem was I didn't know that going into it and the pads sat up too high and the Axis 2 pads are really stiff and I ordered them that way, that was my choice. Um, but the pads were basically hitting up too high and I had a tough time moving in them. Um, and I shared that feedback with CCM and I believe they got that from some others. So this strap is a solid two or three inches longer um, than the Axis 2 version. So you should get the nicely designed strapping system, but a little bit more room to maneuver so that I could wear um, these pads more like how I wore the quick motion one strapping system in terms of how it fits on my leg. And that should be a perfect, perfect thing. One also last topic thinking about just trying to anticipate some of the questions I might get below, uh, showed a lot of the DRS system earlier and people are going to notice that there is weave on here and that we have the lacing um so try and cover that real quick so ccm currently if you look at their customizer has two custom programs one is just the standard custom program um which is the total custom and the total custom pro the total custom pro means that your pads will actually be built on the same production line is any of the CHL, NCAA, or AHL, NHL guys, European pros, so truly pro-level goalies who wear the CCM gear. Um, and the Total Custom Pro also includes the famous NHL um, laced in uh, calf plates. So you will get that um, as well as additional, a uh, uh, couple extra custom specs. So my pads are the Total Custom Pro guessing a little bit when um, the full graphics program is launched. I think there will be a third tier of custom and that will give you total custom pro plus your ability to order a custom graphic um, 
please bear with me on that. Um, that information, I believe, is a little bit fluid at the moment, um, but hopefully that makes sense. And feel free to throw a comment down below, and as more news gets formalized about that, I will update everybody. Um, as for the weave, I never really had a problem with speed skin. Uh, if you watch any of my reviews, you'll know I did not think it was the best sliding system out there, but I still thought it slid better than traditional materials. Um, however, just wanted to try something different this year. Um, so talking with the team at CCM, ordering my specs, as I mentioned, it's a bit stiffer um, than the traditional uh, E-Flex 6. It'll be somewhere between an E-Flex 6, I'd say, and an Axis 2 pad. Um, just talking about new specs, trying weave this year, and we're gonna give that a go and see how I like that compared to the speed skin. If you're curious about my thoughts on speed skin, check out any of the other CCM reviews on my page because I always previously ordered speed skin. Now on to the gloves. Thanks for everybody that has stayed through the video thus far and making it with us all the way to the end. The glove got a major overhaul. So as I look at this, update i would say that eflex 6 leg pad major update eflex 6 glove major update bordering on what i'd call some years are evolutionary releases other years are revolutionary releases i think the glove and the blocker excuse me the glove and the pads are in revolutionary category the blocker um very much an evolutionary release so let's dive into that and then we'll finish strong with the new 581 glove so for the blocker, one of the biggest upgrades this year is going to be the palm. Uh, so the cream material is the new material, the CCM here. It is Axe Suede. And then the gray material is the, you can see it's labeled there, the Dura Palm, um, but it's like the three-dimensional sort of digital material. And then the blocker thing, index finger is gonna have the D3O to help with any uh, stingers, pucks that ride up the stick. So this is designed to give you, and you know what? We're gonna wear these in a couple days so we can finally pop the tags off these bad boys. Um, you can see uh, blocker fits really nicely, good flexibility, and you're gonna get a nice blend of straight up comfort and connection with the ax suede, and then hopefully the durability in the palm. And when I say hopefully, Never had an issue with the CCM blocker palm, so wouldn't expect to start now. You see, interestingly too, the blocker thumb flexes quite a bit. And then you still have that traditional CCM uh, sidewall, very, very stiff. And then in terms of adjustability, in terms of adjustability, you're gonna have the Velcro here and here. I will say, I think a lot of the blocker cuffs the industry are getting over-engineered. I'd be very happy just to not have this piece at all my blocker cuffs. Um, again, a lot of that is personal preference. As you can see, how I have mine set up is as wide open as possible. I want the blocker board nice and tight on my hand there, and I want that cuff wide open. Um, so you can see it's got the D3O, and then Polygene is gonna be like an antimicrobial material uh, to keep that blocker palm nice and fresh. One of the things we can't see, um, which is the other key upgrade on the blocker this year, I'll also zoom in, you can see how wicked the stitching detail is on CCM's custom program from about here. You can see that gray stitching, um, and you probably, right there is a great view of it. Looks like grayish white stitching. Um, just adds some depth to a printed graphic. Um, so it doesn't look perfectly flat, but I feel like a lot of people would assume that's actually a real stitch line. And as with the pads, there is a new core in the blocker. It's the dual light core. Um, that's gonna be designed to be lighter weight. Uh, Axis two blocker is extremely light. Um, so CCM is a good track record with lightweight blockers without sacrificing protection. And then this is also gonna have a traditional um, polymer insert, uh, it's basically a piece of hard plastic in the front, um, which should hopefully give this blocker some great pop when it comes to rebounds. Um, so as I mentioned, the blocker is probably the least changed piece of gear in the line. So went through that quickly and we'll spend the last few minutes here talking about the new 581 glove. 
which is definitely what I expect to get the most questions about. So CCM basically defined the vernacular that most people refer to gloves as uh, today in 2023, stemming back from their days as Coho, then RBK, then Reebok, and now CCM. Uh, CCM's always been the brand, but we all know the history. Um, but you've had 600, you've had 590, and you've had 580. And there were three different brake angles to fit different feels. Um, even though you could argue there's some technical benefits to one or the other, I truly personally believe it's a matter of opinion. Glove brake really comes down to what's most comfortable to you and how you're gonna get the most pucks in your pocket and how you're gonna best shoot the puck. And so CCM had three brakes. People understood really what a 600 felt like, what a 580 felt like, what a 590 felt like. And when people would refer to non-CCM gloves, always would ask like, hey, is that whatever, is that uh, Vaughn gloves, that a 600 brake? CCM broke from tradition on Axis 2 and came up with a 591. That was the same basic closure style as the 590, but all updated materials to give the glove a more mechanical closure, I'd say. Um, so the goal was to make the glove close better without sacrificing any protection, even probably trying to improve protection, and then giving you molded foams inside the glove for added comfort. That glove, I think, is something that people who like it are going to love it, um, but people who want something more traditional might be a little bit lost. And one of the key pieces that we're missing, uh, at least when I got my early release of the glove, they later added it in the customizer. Um, so the glove does not have finger stalls, uh, but later loops were added in the customizer. And so here we are in 2023 with the 581. CCM has taken the classic 580 Break, which is sort of a cult favorite. I don't believe that has been available at retail since about 2005 as a stock option. Um, so literally it's been almost 20 years since you've been able to walk into a store without ordering custom or without going to a specialty shop that ordered 580s and walk out of the store. Uh, but instead of just releasing something that was basically 20 year old technology and calling it fresh, CCM updated the 580 glove break to become the 581. And in the years I've been doing TGN, I think it's about seven years now, I cannot believe that. The glove has changed the least and every year I'm waiting for that next glove revolution. Yes, folks, just to make sure we're clear at home, blockers have changed more in seven years than catch gloves. Um, so I absolutely applaud CCM for trying to do some different stuff here. All right, so if we take a look at the glove, I always go single T, double T will be stock, but this is a nice deep pocket and you can see it has a plastic insert inside the T. So this is a very strong, robust T. Also went with uh, skate lace, but if you look in the palm, there's no traditional, um, you know, these construction laces here, these big heavy nylon cords. There's none of those running through the palm. And so basically um, there's padding that kind of covers you through the middle of the palm, which no other glove in the market will have, which is designed to prevent stingers. Um, and then inside the glove, which I can't really show you, there are no finger stalls. So this area is like a mitten um, as opposed to a glove, um, but there are some heat moldable foam. So it's recommended by CCM that you get your glove baked in a skate bake oven, either when your glove comes in or if you're buying a stock retail one, when you walk out of the store um, and the materials inside will actually soften up um, and mold to your fingers. And then new on the 581, there is a loop um, on the index finger and the pinky finger. Um, so your middle two fingers are still roaming loose, but two of the four fingers uh, feel like they have a loop. And that is a major difference in terms of traction inside the club. So if you try it on a 590, maybe at a weird 591 and maybe had a weird sensory experience and didn't really like how it felt. Um, this really closes the gap tremendously. And I don't know if that many people will try this on and immediately be like, huh, this doesn't have finger stalls. That's different. I do think that happened to people with 591. The loops help tremendously. Um, the other big change 
for me um, with the 81 construction is inside the gloves. So you can see my watch there is traditionally where you'd have a wrist strap. That is completely removed and we have CCM's trying to get the branding there for you on screen. Uh, CCM's cross form strapping system. Um, so you have adjustments here and then you have Velcro adjustment here. And this is like a padded neoprene sling. You also have adjustment down here. Um, but the goal is to lock your hand deep in the glove, but not lock your wrist so that you can really present your hand out aggressively like this, or when you're going to shoot, you have complete uh, flexibility versus, you know, when you have your wrist strap uh, there, it can impede it. So CCM, Bauer and Warrior all offer gloves with this style now. I was really uncomfortable um, without a wrist strap, but after using uh, CCM 591 um, and Bauer, mock um, for the last couple years. I'm totally on board with no wrist strap now and I will always order that moving forward. Um, if you watched any of my true reviews, you said I actually got so used to not having a wrist strap, putting it on, felt like I was in wrist jail. Um, so I thought I was gonna hate that. I actually love it. So for anybody that's a little bit concerned about that, definitely take that into consideration. Um, you're gonna have D3O inside the palm here. And then this, you can see the D3O logo there. And then this is a game ready break. The 591 was pretty tough to close um, just in a store. After you baked it, it did soften right up, but 581 is a much improved design. Just so if you're trying the glove on in the store, um, it closes. So this has not been baked yet. I will go and get this baked. Don't know if I'll have time before my first skate, but definitely after that. Um, so that's a big improvement as well. So like I say, I want to give CCM some credit for really putting themselves out there and trying to evolve the entire glove category. I had some nitpicks with the 591 and the 581 uh, might sound a bit like a review. I've not used this on the ice yet, but just trying it on you sometimes can just tell, and this is definitely a step forward um, with the, what I would call X91 construction. So let's close this up here. So yeah, and then you can see it's got the classic uh, 581 shape to it. Good back of hand padding, and then this is elastic as well, so shouldn't interfere with your chest pad too much. So hopefully it's a good overview on the E-Flex 6 581 glove, which is a completely new product, basically nothing to do with the old E-Flex 5 600. This is a completely new glove. Thank you to everybody who made it to the end of this video. Again, please throw a like and a subscribe. Hugely appreciated. E-Flex 6 gear I will wear this week, so stay tuned to my Instagram channel at the Goalnet to see some uh, post-skate thoughts and information and then tune back in. Um, depending on what goes on, we'll definitely get a review of this equipment after I've used it. Um, and good chance we'll do a comparison video as well with the Axis 2. If you feel like I missed anything in the overview here explaining what's new on this compared to the previous E-Flex 6, excuse me, E-Flex 5 here with the E-Flex 6, throw a question down below and I will do my best to answer it. This is the Goal Net, signing out.